All right, Daryl, so earlier you talked about, you know, uh, members of city council, other community activists who you invited but did not show. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about parents and, you know, the level of parental, parental involvement in the summit? What, do you find there was a lot of parents there? Uh, no, there wasn't a lot of parents there, and that's what it bothered me because we put it out. Um, uh, uh, we put it out in a newspaper, we sent, every, you know, all the information out. But it's, it's serious. You know, I think that, um, you know, we have a, a, a serious problem in our, in our cities. Uh, trend. I mean, we got to look at society. What are we planning to do with our young kids? If our kids are not educated enough, if our kids that graduate graduated from Trenton High with a fifth grade reading level and you have 60% dropout, I mean, where are we? Where is, what's going to happen to these kids? And, and as I talk about, you know, I, I feel bad because you know we have an administration from city administration, uh, community leaders that aren't taking this problem serious, or I actually question, do they really uh, know how serious this is? And, uh, you know, I don't want to see our young kids going to jail. I want to see, you know, our young kids going to college or trade school or, or taking up something where they can get good jobs and take care of their family. But we got to understand this. We have a serious problem, people, and uh, the serious problem is our kids are uneducated and uh, they're lacking uh, the values that will take them to the next level. Um, it, it was talked about our young kids and, and the violence. Uh, like I said, we had a violent, we had a um, problem right out there in the street, a riot. Mm -hmm. We had over 150, it was 150 kids on Hanover Street in Montgomery. Makes you wonder, did those parents know where their children were? Yeah, and, 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 and involved you know, and, in that. Oh yeah, and, and, and one of the things that it's the parents have the issues, but also there's also a role for government and real programs and leaders in churches. You know, people always question, oh, it's the parents' fault. But, um, you know, I quote Dr. King, and I want you to hear me when, he's, when I say this. And if we all got pictures of Dr. King, we come out and celebrate Dr. King, but do we really understand what, he's, what he talks about uh, in his speeches? He said that we're all caught up in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in the single garment of destiny. And whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. And that I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. And you can never be what you ought to be unless I am what I ought to be. Then he quotes the poet John Donne. He says that no man is an island. Every man is a piece of the continent and a part of the main. Then he goes on to say that any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind. Therefore, never send to know whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. And this is the way we should be. And I've never seen in the, in the history of Trenton since now that I believe our leadership, is specifically black leadership, from political leadership, religious leadership, the community leadership, they actually hate. I can see it in the eyes. They hate their own young kids. See, and, and they hate the kids. They want to see the kids locked up. And, and, you know, how could you hate your own people? And how could you want to see your own kids go to jail? And there's no rehabilitation in the prisons. We know, we know now that we have young kids that are going to the juvenile justice system, and they're coming out worse than ever before. They're coming out gang members. And your political leaders, your religious leaders, your community leaders, and you don't even question this type of system that does not give a damn about our kids. And I want to say our kids now are Hispanic kids, black kids, white kids, because we're all living in the state city together. You get a bunch, everybody. We're a multicultural city. But I don't think that these leadership really uh, care about these kids. I, I believe to the point they hate these young kids. You know, and they haven't, these leaderships, the ones that we call, especially the black leadership, they actually are leaders that have never done what they're supposed to have done. If we would have done a real job in the past, then we wouldn't have this problem. But now, the, the flip side of that is say, you know, how, you know, activists like, you know, Andrew Bobbitt and Divine Allah, different individuals who week after week or who coordinate to build teams but, and things like that. But they How could they hate I think they, but the, the people I don't, I, if, they, know, if they create maybe, these sort of things? I understand. I understand what you're saying. I'm going I'm to I'm tell you about it. Okay. Okay. Every time I hear a... Now, maybe not Divine Allah. He's a little different. 
But every time I hear words come out to these activist communities march, what they want to do is lock up. We need more prosecutors. We need more cops. I understand police force is strong, should be strong. Mm. But the point is they offer no solution. And the solution is anger. Anger. Call the cops. We need more prosecutors. You know, and do prosecutors, what is their job for? Is to lock up. They offer no real solution. I haven't heard of one solution out of Team Trent. See that? Team. Team Trent. I haven't heard one solution out of those guys. Now, they're supposed to be the brightest and community actors, leaders in, in, in the community, and they offer no solution because they have no solution. You know, it's all about taking pictures. You know, I want to be on Facebook. You know, I want to look good on Facebook, so I'm going to take a picture of me marching, take a picture of me speaking, click, click, click. I mean, that's the fun stuff. I mean, that's what they want. And so people act like they, they think that these individuals have the knowledge to lead them, and they're, want, and they're actually going to do something. They're not. And I'm so disappointed. I'm disappointed in Andrew Bauman. You know, he gets on the stage at, at the City Hall and laughs and, well, we want all y'all to tell the police. Stop snitching. I'm going to snitch if I see, but, okay. But what's the solution? Every, you know, everybody was on that stage um, at City Hall last week. They talked about, you know, all oh, let's come together and let's, let's, let's Stop the violence. And well, that's a good speech. Oh, everybody, oh, that's politically right. Talk about it. But what's the solution? What real program? And, and like I said before, you got parents who are, who are upset, kids that died. And kids, more kids are going to die. More kids are going to be violent. And what's the real program? Mm. You know, and, and, and to the, I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult for me sitting on the sideline and watching this. And, and especially the cedars and not the say There were parents telling like, you know, I didn't come here for this. There were people at this protest saying, you know, I did not come here to hear people sing, people, see people singing, people dancing, you know, having a good time on stage, making little speeches, but there was no solution. And every time they offer no solution. And so, you know, it just, it just bothers me. And, and that's the type of society we're going to have. Mm. We're having, we have, so many young kids that are failing, whether they're black, Hispanic, and white kids, they, they're failing. And all they know is violence. And so what these groups are talking about is these nonviolent coordinates and we can stop this violence. We can come together with the kids and with the parents and offer a real program. And they showed us programs. You can go ask Kathy McBride and you can ask Pat Hall. They were there. And, mm -hmm. you know, but if the community is ignorant. And, and, and I don't blame this, this, some of the kids because they have ignorant parents, but also they have this ignorant leadership, religious leadership and political leadership and community leadership. And, I, and so it's serious, Anwar, and, and I don't see it getting any better. I just don't see it getting any better because the, the type of leadership. And um, people need to stop following these individuals because they have had, what, three or four marches already, three or four big protests. Now, somebody could say, you know, you know, uh, it, it, you know, if you can dish it out, you can take it. Now, what, you know, as far as somebody might question your commitment, I mean, how much uh, well, have, you, have you put any initiatives out outside of this program, uh, the summit? I mean, what, what is your sustain, sustained effort on this on this? Well, issue? my thing is I brought nonviolence education, a real decent program. I've always been involved in the city mm -hmm. and uh, I've seen individuals who put on on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. They have never offered the community anything but a basketball or have a party. You know, let's have more programs. Well, what kind of programs? All they talk about is bringing kids after school, playing basketball, playing video games. You know, uh, let's have a dance. And so they're going to party and play basketball, dance, and they're still violent. There's nothing to top, to, to tackle, to deal with this problem mm -hmm. of violence. You know, it was a young lady that came to see me. And she had, she had two kids. Uh, it was a couple weeks ago, and um, uh, she was here. At, we had a meeting, and she cried because at, at, her daughter went to um, the school. On, I think it was on Pennington Avenue. Um, I can't think of the name of the school right now, but um, she cried because her daughter was in special ed, and she worked at security at one of the schools. Mm -hmm. And her daughter was in special ed. And they had